This lecture deals with measures of central tendency. Topics include measures like the mode, median, and mean, the shape of distributions, and how to choose an appropriate measure of central tendency for any given variable. So what exactly are measures of central tendency? They're, they're numbers that describe what is average, typical, or in the middle of a distribution. They're single measures used to describe or summarize a distribution in some concise way. We'll begin with the most basic form of measure of central tendency, something called the mode. The mode is the most commonly occurring category. It's the category having the largest frequency or percent. The mode can be used with a, a variable of any level of measurement, but it's the only one that's appropriate for nominal variables. Take a look at the following table. It shows the distribution of the variable highest degree earned. What if we wanted to calculate the mode for this distribution? How would we do it? Well, we'd have to identify the category corresponding to the highest frequency or percent. Looking at the distribution, we see that the category high school is associated with 976 cases, or about 49% of the distribution, which is the highest overall. Therefore, the mode is high school. Know that the mode is the category itself, not the frequency. How would we interpret this statistic? Well, we could say that most people have only a high school degree. In some distributions, two or more categories have the highest frequency or percentage, in which case the distribution is said to be bimodal. Even when two scores are close but not identical, we would still say that they are essentially bimodal. Take a look at the following bar graph. It shows the distribution for the variable social class. What's the true mode here? Well, we can see that 43.59% of the distribution consider themselves to be working class, and this is the highest frequency of all the categories in the distribution. However, there's another category, middle class, that's very close to the true mode. At 42.87% of the distribution, middle class is nearly as high as working class. Therefore, we would say that this distribution is essentially bimodal, and we will report both in talking about the mode. To interpret this, we would just say that most people consider themselves either to be working class or middle class. Another measure of central tendency is something called the median. The median represents the exact middle of a distribution. It divides the distribution into two equal parts. Half the distribution is above the median, and the other half is below the median. However, because it's a rank statistic, the median should only be calculated for variables that are measured on an ordinal level of measurement or higher. That is, it's not appropriate for nominal variables, which have essentially no rank ordering. How do we calculate the median? Well, there are several ways to do it. The conventional approach is to locate the case corresponding to the middle distribution by doing the following. Sorting the data from lowest to highest, adding 1 to the number of cases, and then dividing that value by 2. Doing this points to the uh, value corresponding to the median category. However, the process differs for whether, depending on whether you have odd or even number of cases. For an odd number of cases, it points to a single number, and that number corresponds to the median category. If you have an even number of cases, however, it points to two cases, and the, and the median falls in between those two cases. However, there's an easier way to calculate the median, and that involves using something called a percentile. So the median is actually a special case of a more general measure called a percentile. A percentile tells us uh, how much of the distribution falls at or below a given score. For example, the 75th percentile has 75% of the distribution below it, and 25% of the distribution above it. So what is the median then? The median turns out to be the 50th percentile. It's a case associated with a cumulative percent of 50. So the first case to include approximately 50% of the distribution is the median. However, if it lands exactly on 50, uh, we actually have to use a slightly different procedure to calculate the median, but more on that in a second. Take a look at this table. It shows the distribution for the variable age, here broken down to age categories. How do we find the median from this distribution? Well, we look at the cumulative percent column, and we try to figure out which is the first to include 50%. And we see that, that the category 40 to 49 is the first to include 50%, with 54.7% of the distribution. Therefore, 40 to 49 is the median. How would we interpret that? Well, we would say that half the distribution is age 49 or younger, and the other half is above the age of 49. What happens if the median falls exactly on 50? Well, that means the median is between that category and the next highest category. If we're dealing with an interval ratio number, we would just take the average of those two categories. 
For ordinal measures, we will just report both. The final measure of central tendency is something called the mean. The mean is the average value, that is the arithmetic center of the distribution. And it's obtained by summing all the scores of the variable and dividing that total by the total number of cases. And this is typically only used with interval ratio variables because it involves arithmetic calculations. Here's the formula for the mean. Let's suppose that we were trying to take the mean of some variable y. We would call the mean of y, y bar. Because notice that we write an over bar over the, the um, letter y. That denotes some kind of an average or mean. How do we actually calculate the mean? Well, the formula tells us to take the sum of the values of the variable y. Notice that the Greek letter sigma is used to indicate summation. And then we divide that value by n, the total number of cases. Here's a very simple example of the calculation for a mean. Suppose that we had the age of 10 students, ages 21, 32, 23, 41, 20, 30, 36, 22, 25, and 27. The first step in calculating the average is just add together all of the different ages. And if we add up all 10 of these ages, we get a value of 277. Step two involves dividing that total by the total number of cases. And since we have 10 students in this case, when we divide 27.27 by 10, we get 27.7. So on average, students are 27.7 years of age. We can also find the mean from a frequency distribution. And that's very handy if we have a large sample size. We wouldn't want to calculate these things by hand because it would be very time consuming. So using a frequency distribution to calculate the mean can be a big time saver. How do we actually calculate the mean from a frequency distribution? Well, we would take each score and we would weight it by its frequency and then divide by the total number of cases. So we have to take the formula and slightly modify it. Notice that in the numerator, we have the sum of the values of the variable y multiplied by f, where f is the frequency corresponding to each of the cases. And in the denominator, we again have n, the total number of cases. So let's look at an example of how to do that. We'll look at how to calculate the mean of the total number of children. And here are the steps involved. First, we would list the categories and the frequencies. Second, we would multiply the categories by their respective frequencies. Then we would sum the resulting values, and then we would divide that number by the total number of cases. Okay, take a look at this table. It shows the frequency distribution of the number of children. Notice that people can have between 0 and 8 children, and each of them has a frequency distribution, a percent distribution, and a cumulative distribution. In step 1, we'll just list the categories and their frequencies side by side. In step 2, we're going to multiply the category of the variable, in this case the actual number of children, 0 through 8, by the frequency. So, for example, we would multiply the first category, 0 number of children, by its frequency, 536, and that would just give us 0. For the second category, 1 child, we would multiply that by its frequency, 274, and 1 times 274 just gives us 274. For the next category, 2 children, there's 569 cases that have two children. So 2 times 569 is 1,138. Basically, we would do the same thing for every category until we've exhausted all the categories in the variable. Once we're done, we're going to add together all the, the weighted categories. And when we weight the, the categories by their frequency and add them together, we get a value of 3,729. Now the final step is just to plug those numbers into the formula. And so in our numerator, we get the sum of the weighted frequencies, 3,729. We divide that by the total number of cases, in this case, 1,971. And when we do the arithmetic, we get a value of 1.89. So we see here that, on average, people have just under two children. Now this is very important. When we calculate the mean using a frequency distribution, we have to make sure that we divide by the number of cases, not by the number of categories. Dividing by the number of categories would lead you to a wrong answer, so make sure you avoid that. What are some of the properties of the average? Because the mean, unlike the mode or the median, incorporates all the scores in the distribution, it's said to be the, the center of gravity of the distribution. That is, it perfectly balances all the scores. In other words, it's the exact arithmetic center of the distribution. However, it's very sensitive to extreme values, that is, values that are further apart from the rest of the data. 
and it turns out that the mean is pulled in the direction of very low or very high uh, valued cases. Now the mode and the median aren't affected by extreme values, especially the median, which is always in the middle. And that's an important consideration when we think about something called the shape of the distribution. In general, uh, distributions can have two general kinds of shapes. They can either be symmetrical or skewed. And this depends on whether there's any extreme values in the, in the tails of the distributions. So take a look at the following figure. Panel A shows a symmetrical distribution. Uh, that's one in which the mean, median, and mode are found in the middle of the distribution. And essentially, the area under the curve below the mean, median, and mode is the same or a mirror image of the area above the curve. So if we took and folded this distribution in half, the area below the mean would, would equal the area above the mean. And you can see that the mode, median, and the mean are all in the middle. Look at panel B, however. This one's a little bit different. In this case, we have a negatively skewed distribution, meaning that we have some very small value that's pulling the distribution towards the left tail. And when we see something like that, we notice that the mean is pulled in the direction of the extremely low value. So the mean is going to be to the left of the median. And then the mode is going to be to the right of the median, because that's where the peak of the data is going to, is going to, be, found, it's going to be found. Look at panel C. This is another type of, of skewed distribution. This is called a positively skewed distribution. In this distribution, we find that there's some extremely high value that's pulling the mean towards it. And that means that the mean is going to be to the right of the median. And then the mode is going to be to the left. Now, it may seem a little bit counterintuitive. Although most of the distribution is actually in the, the left tail, we nonetheless call this a positive skew. And that's because it, in some extreme positive value is pulling the distribution towards the extreme portion of the right tail. So don't be confused by the terminology. So how do we choose the appropriate measure of central tendency? Well, we have to take into account two things. The most basic consideration is the level of measurement of the variable. For nominal, var nominal variables, we only have one choice, and that's the mode. For ordinal variables, we can choose either the mode or the median. It really doesn't matter which we choose. It really just depends on what you want to talk about, whether you want to tell somebody about the most commonly occurring case or the case that's in the middle. And then for interval ratio variables, we can choose either the mean, the median, or the mode. But the choice of, of one of the three depends on, on the shape of the distribution. So if we have a symmetrical distribution, the mean is the best choice, since it uses the most information. It uses all of the values of the variable in its calculation. However, when we have a skewed distribution, the mean's not going to be in the center of the distribution because the mean is going to be pulled towards the extreme values. In that case, the mode or the median is the better choice because neither are affected by the extreme values. In fact, the, the median is probably the best choice because it's always in the middle.